we will come to adopting sources of rule. Our first source of, source of rule is the constitution. Constitution can be separate be defined as a public document that contains the rules and regulations that governs a state. It is also the supreme rule of the RAD, either written or unwritten. Supremacy of the constitution. Validity. The rule in the states always derives their validity from the constitution. Any rule in any state must derive its validity from the constitution, be it written or unwritten. Also, another supremacy of the constitution is that constitution acts as the source of law. Any source of law contradicting the constitution is reader to be null and void. If any source of law contradicts the constitution is term to be narrow and void and cannot operate in any certain state or mission is in another supremacy of the constitution. Any omission in contravention with the constitution is term to be invalid. So unchallengeable. The legality of the constitution cannot be challenged in any court of law or in any government organ. Constitution is unchallengeable in any court of law, since it is the supreme rule of the RAD. Government structure. The constitution is the supreme since it outlines the government structure of any state and defines various organs of the government. For instance, in Kenya, the constitution establishes the various forms of government, for instance, the executive, the registration, and the judiciary. Also, so constitution is supreme because it establishes the highest office in this country. The constitution is supreme since it establishes the highest office in the RAD, granting the office its mandate to govern the state. For instance, in United States, the United States Constitution provides the office of the President of the U.S. So it is the supreme rule of the RAD which since it gives the office of the President the mandate to operate. The other source of rule is the Act of Parliament. These are rules enacted by a state's parliament or registration, also referred to as statutes. Advantages of these statutes. They are democratic in nature. Since parliament consists of representatives of people who are erected through democratic process, therefore representing the will of the people. Hence, they are democratic in nature since they directly or indirectly represent the will of the people to the government since these people erect them since they view them as their own representatives so they interrogate the view of the people in the grassroots. They, are also, they also offer legal solution. Act of Parliament's aid on resolving legal problem in the country. In case of any legal problem, Act of Parliament can be amended or may uh, create other new. They are also dynamic statutes. This means that Parliament have the jurisdiction and the resources to make new rules and amend the existing one to counter the any problem in the society. For instance, in Kenya there was there is a case or a debate in or a bill in parliament about to the, to the gender rule. So, the parliament have all the resources to interrogate, to move, to move on, to make debates, to amend the constitution and ensure they establish the to the gender rule, to, to the gender rule as, pro, as it has been propagated by the constitution. Transparent in nature. Statutes or, parliament or Act of Parliament are viewed to be transparent in nature since they are open to public opinion before they are passed to be effective. Effective rules. This is because if there is any beast in Parliament, they are open to public, public through the country's gazette. For instance, we have the Kenyan Gazette, so they must be published in the Kenyan Gazette. Uniform rule. Act of Parliament are uniform in nature. And they are applied without discriminating any person, be it natural or artificial. 
rules are uniform. They are applied uniformly to any person. They do not discriminate anybody, be it poor, be it rich, natural, artificial passion. They are also they are all applied equally among all individuals. Disadvantage of these statutes. One of the disadvantages about the statutes or Act of Parliament is that they are bulky and technical. Some bills in Parliament are so bulky and technical in nature, since some bill faces inadequate quorum when they are passed. Also, parliamentary may lack knowledge and time to look at the bill into details. So these bills are sometimes bulky and technical in nature, since sometimes Parliament may lack quorum. Some, sometimes member of parliament may lack knowledge. Sometimes, if, if it is in terms of health bills, some member of parliament may lack, may lack knowledge about health acts. Health. If it is finance, some member of parliament may lack finance background or finance knowledge. Also, they have complex formalities. Act of parliament follows a lot of formalities, which are rigid, complex in nature. Therefore, they may be easily manipulated by specific people affected by the bill. For instance, you see when certain bill is taken to parliament, some, if it does not benefit some members of parliament in, in certain location or strategic places, they may prefer not to participate in the bill or debate about the bill or pass the bill because it is not affecting them. It's really tedious. It takes too long before a bill becomes a rule. Hence, they can be effective to counter an emergency, since the parliamentary, the parliamentary bills take a lot of formalities and strategy because they become rule. They, fo they follow a, 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 very, a very long track before they, they, are, they are promulgated by the president to become rules. So they cannot be used to counter some emergencies, non-democratic in nature. Most to fail to be democratic, since sometimes they conform to the wishes of the executive or the ruling party rather than the will of the people who elect them. For instance, in Kenya, you get members of parliament robbing about their political party and be controlled by their political party leaders in order to pass certain bill and, uh, and reject other bill, biasness. It's another disadvantage of this statute or act of parliament. Member of legislature debate on B based on their own views, hence make them at um, his hence make at a net B which are balanced in nature. They make a debate bills based on their own emotion, views, how they feel the, the bill affects them. So the bill sometimes they are biased in nature. Another source of rule is the delegated registration. They are rules and regulations that are made by some other competent bodies other than parliament. They are also referred to as direct registration or subordinate registration or, sub or subsidiary registration. Adre uh, one, some advantage of the re delegated registration is that they save time. Subsidiary registration save limited time for parliament by assisting Parliament in making rules, hence allowing Parliament to concentrate on matter of general public. The delegation registration, they help Parliament in making rules, allowing since Parliament have limited time since they are they are erect and seasonary, so they need some qualified bodies to help them in making rules. Since if Parliament spend all time making rules, so they they may time like time to deal with general public matters. So emergencies, delegated registration cover urgent matters since they are not debated because parliament is not always in session. So since parliamentary registration, registration takes too long, so delegated registration come up to rescue in case of an emergency. For instance, when COVID-19 pandemic emitted, we needed some other competent bodies to deal with the pandemic. So if we, when COVID came, and for instance, parliament was not in session, and we needed rules to counter the COVID-19 pandemic, how could we resolve it? We needed some competent bodies to make those rules. 
flexible it is a it is registration it is a registration that are flexible hence they can be modified from time to time if found non practical in certain area since the formation of delegated registration does not for a uh, does not for a lot of formalities it does not use a lot of resources as compared to act of parliament or parliamentary registration so it is so flexible to change it or modify it or to do it with to do away with it technical matters it are experts to deal with the law hence seem to be effective rather than those made by parliament this one is another adv a huge advantage of delegated registration the enable experts in a certain field is if, if it is in a field of finance to deal without problem affecting finance then they have the core knowledge to deal with that problem and when they deal with it being dealt with by expertise it operate effectively as compared to those made by parliament future problem subordinate registration deals with future new challenges since they can be easily amended scrubbed or since they do not for a lot of procedural formalities yeah they can deal with future problems since they are uh, they can be used temporarily not as so per, so permanently in nature like parliamentary statutes they do not for a lot of formalities they do not use a lot of resources they save time so this, these are some of the advantages of the delegated registration saving time deal with emergency flexible technical matters future problems we also have some disadvantage of delegated registration one of them is legal omission sometimes cabinet secretaries or ministers are given mandate to make rules on matter of general public which is unconstitutional mandate given is a constitutional mandate given to parliament since they are the direct representation of general public so sometimes cabinet secretary or ministers are given work to do with representation of general public affairs which is in contravention with the constitution so it is a legal omission and it is unacceptable by law this this delegated registration sometimes may be non democratic since some personal bodies delegated some power to make re registration though not representative of general public and therefore not accountable if they make any undesirable rule so if ministers who most probably are appointed are appointed by the prime minister or the president are given the mandate to make some regist registration they were not elected directly by people so they may they make those some registration which are not suitable to the people and they are not accountable to anybody inadequate supervision sometimes delegated registration lack in that adequate supervision from the parliament since the rules are passed within a very limited time for the parliament to supervise sometimes these delegated registration since they are made in a very in a very limited time sometimes parliament may lack time to supervise them and therefore it can lead to emergency of unacceptable registration and or some registration which contravenes the constitution inadequate of publicity rule made by parliament are highly publicized in the government gazette as compared to delegated registration which lack publicity to make them popular to general public yeah rules that are made by parliament they are highly publicized in the government gazettes you can get them you can get them in social media uh, social media have come uh, come up as another as another huge organization which is using which has been used by some government to ensure the publicity of the bills for instance twitter I, i see somebody like trump was so keen on using twitter he was using twitter a lot in matter of public policy yeah so even social media is now being being infiltrated as one of the method of communicating so to make it popular to general public abusive rules possibility due to lack of financial supervision from parliament it gives rise to chance of indirect in indirect rule 
indirect rule being abused by the bodies delegated to make the rule. Another classification, another source of the rule, of rule is the judicial precedent. Judicial precedent acts as another source of the rule. These are judges made rules. And, uh, and they are found in courts. The judges apply existing principle of rule by referring to previous precedent or cases which have been which have been which have been made ed which have already been made which are now referred to as precedent. The decision ruling in the case become law binding to another subordinate provided it originate from superior court. So some subordinate subordinate court uphold precedent from other superior courts or apex courts. For a precedent to be binding, it must be a decision hierarchy. It must follow a decision hierarchy. The president the precedent must have been from a superior court in the hierarchy to make it binding to another subordinate court. So it must be coming from a superior court, for instance, Supreme Court, to achieve magistrate's court. So in order for, but not for a chief magistrate court to a superior court. I hope that I have driven the point back home. The legal similarity. The legal point that fact must be the same as those covered by the existing judicial precedent for it to be binding. If the president fails to be binding, the judge may adopt a distinguished precedent. So instance, the judge can be not be forced to, uh, to adopt a case based on murder on a case made based on lip so this those are two different judicial precedent case which he cannot be compared to use as a certain if he, if in the table he have a case on murder he cannot adopt a case on lip a uh, precedent on lip to make to make judgment on that case we also have an unrevised precedent precedent an unrevised precedent that uh, we also have another requirement it must be an unrevised precedent. The, de the decision should not have been revised by another superior court, which they relate for as a, as which they relate for a subordinate court to adapt, since revising of precedent denote overthinking by a superior court. So, for a precedent to be to be applicable, it is not. It should not be revised by another superior court. Superior court should not have revised that that precedent because the revision of that precedent may amount to overthinking of by superior court which will make it not be applicable to another subordinate court it will be hectic to apply that precedent so the other requirement for precedent is jurisdiction the decision must have been made in the same jurisdiction if done in another it is rather to be invalid. So a precedent in a country like US cannot be adopted in another country like Kenya, or a precedent in Kenya cannot be adopted by another country like Somali or Uganda or Tanzania. We also have some component a court for us in making a decision. Legal decision is based on two components, on two basic components. One of them is the issue decide, is reason for the decision. It is the legal reasoning of the judge to defend on the ground which he has made his decision. This one is where a judge try to explain why he have arrived to a certain decision decision about a case. For instance, it is a murder case. The judge must explain why he have found the accused guilty of the murder and, ask, and explain why he have sentenced him a death sentence or find him a certain amount of money. Also, we have another basic component called obita dicta. Judges by the way statement. It is non-legal reasoning where judges explain the issue decide this statement. It's just a by the way statement. We also have various type of precedent. Precedent. We have a declaratory precedent. It is where the judge apply an existing rule without extending it. Hence, declaring the rule and judgment, therefore forming 
the basis of declaratory precedent. This is where just a da judge adopt a, a precedent from another court, for instance, a judge in court of appeal adopt a precedent which had been taken in Supreme Court and apply it effectively without adopting a, a, distinguish, a distinguished precedent. We also have an original precedent, which is where the court judgment does not apply an existing or previous court decision, which the court can rely on on deciding a particular case. Therefore, the judge decides the case on general principle. This is where the judge does not apply any existing precedent or previous court decision. He come up with his own case law. That's why the judge makes the cause, the case, decide the case using some general principles. We also have another precedent called the distinguished precedent. It will occur where the earlier precedent cannot be applied fairly to the case at hand. When applied, it can lead to injustice. Therefore, the judge applies a distinguished precedent where the earlier precedents also re it remain the rule. It have not been, been scrapped off. It is there. But the judge adopt a distinguished precedent. It is, for instance, it is robbery. Yes, both cases are robbery and violence. But one is robbery with violence. But there is murder which happened during the robbery and violence. So adopting the case which was made on only robbery with violence with no murder and this one have murder, it will be not unfair or injustice for that party of a ruling precedent. It is a rule which have been expressly derived or the legal deprived or the legal effect that makes it cease to have any authority. It is overruling. It is overruling. It does not adapt the legal effect. So it deprives the legal effect. It does not contain illegal, any, legal, any legal effect. So it ceases to be to be to have any authority. Persuasive precedent, precedent. These are the decision which a latest court may adopt, but it may adopt, but it does, but it does not follow. For instance, decision of a, a decision of a decision in a subordinate court. Sometimes a, uh, a persuasive precedent, it can be adapted from a, a square, a latex court can adapt, a, and it, it is not must, it is uh, it's just a kind of honor, it can adapt a precedent from a subordinate court and use it to determine a case in a latex court. It's where like Supreme Court can, add, can buy some of its knowledge from a chief magistrate's court for a case which had been done in a chief magistrate's court. Advantages of judicial precedent, one of them is certainty. The, de the decision applies a very high degree of uniformity where every person, either natural or artificial person, can understand the rule effectively and predict its outcome. That is the point of certainty. The decision applies a very high degree of uniformity where a legal person Natural or artificial can easily understand the rule effectively and predict this outcome. If you have been given a certain case was done this way and the outcome was this way, it is easier to understand the rule since it is not so complicated. We also have flexibility. The rule can be changed easily, especially when applied. It is especially when it applied to resort to injustice. Also, it can be changed where need arise as to accommodate to be accommodated in the society. So it is flexible, it can be changed. Judges can adopt a distinguished precedent and be changed, developed. New judicial precedent can be can be established or adopted to meet the need of society. So there is room for growth and development of judicial precedent. There is practical. History are practical since they deal with factual circumstances. Since they since the 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 rule are fully tested, are defect identified and amended, so they are practical. They have already been applied, and any defect can be can be understood easily. So, one of the disadvantages of judicial precedents is rigidity. Rigidity. 
in most cases in most cases keys are very rigid and one rule in laid in laid down is binding even if it's unjust in natural in nature or simply wrong so keys rules sometimes are very rigid and sometimes one rule one rule made to be adopted by all the cases so sometimes it can, it can result to injustice of a subtract some judges overthink becoming so of a subtract so when they want to establish a distinguished precedent that is when a judge does not want to adopt an existing precedent at one and try to overthink to draw a very fine lines in order to avoid that precedent be it because he is biased in nature or does not want to decide the case how a certain judge determined it so he develop very fine lines to differentiate that case with that case in order to adopt some distinguished precedent so it is complex it is bulk in manner that it contain too much rule made over a number of cases recorded in different rules so some uh, due to due to case law being so open and open to growth it is so bulk in manner it is contained in too many volumes since many cases are decided many cases are decided so it is so complex a rigid yeah complex at back so slow to grow think case law depend on litigation for the road to emerge hence the litigation hence litigation tend to be slow expensive therefore the body of case cannot grow to meet the modern demand some case law are uh, back backlog in nature they are made they are made wrong time ago so to adopt them and to adopt the new ones they are, it is so expensive and so danger of illogicity some some who do not want to follow a previous president may be tempted to draw very fine distinction in order to to the to make the ex, to avoid the existing rule therefore introducing element of artificiality in the rule so some judges as i have told you try to draw some fine distinction by overthinking in order not to to avoid some element of rule artificial uh, artificiality in rules so factors that decline the authority of presidents or president is less judges less judges if the number of judges is less than the required in the bench or not of recognized merit rather to the president ineffective so if the number of the judge in the in the in the bench does not have the number of required judge in making the president it is time to be narrow and bold non unanimous decision where the decision is not agreed all together by the judges some judges defect or refuse to to consent or to accept the president it is readers to the case row invalid if the the judge who view the president not effective surpass the judge who view it effective so it can be readers invalid it comprise is comprised compromise decision if the decision in court has been compromised by another court or judges uh, or judge through a revised president for instant entering entering consent judgment carried rest wait it read the president if, if the president in fact infected where there is a compromised decision where a judge try to revise the precedent since when applied it is re resulting to injustice so it can lead to the president being termed as ineffective and now be read to be narrow and void and just decision where the decision is not fair in nature as opposed to the public policy it leads the decision illegal so if the decision made in a certain precedent it is unfair in nature it is biased in nature it will be read as illegal special decision a case made in special circumstances has a retro authority effect in ordinary circumstances therefore ineffective in nature so in special cases which which may occur 
So that special decision does not become a binding case law but that can be that can be adopted in another case. So it is it it, it, it cannot be applied. So it renders the precedent ineffective. Illegal precedent, a decision which was made from a precedent of no recognized authority, renders the case law ineffective. Illegal precedent must be made from a court which does not have the amplitude or the ability to make precedent or adopted from a cause uh, uh, a precedent which can be a pra uh, have been adopted from a subordinate cause to a superior cause so it can make due to to procedural formalities it can make that precedent be rendered ineffective so we also have another source of law which is the islamic law it is also referred to as Muslim law. It is a limited source of law originating from Muslim faith. The law is applied in Kadi courts only. It is, it is subsidiary source of law in some countries such as Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. So, civil case that apply to Isra that apply Islamic law is marriage dispute among couples subscribing to Mus to Islam faith, divorce among Muslim, succession dispute among Muslim families. There is something which everybody should remember that Kathikos are mandated on proceeding only on civil cases among parties who profess Muslim faith but restricted on hearing criminal cases. So a Muslim will not create another Muslim and the case be recent or be attempted or had in a Kathi court. It only deals with civil cases. Therefore, we also have another source of law which is the African and customary rule, a rules that originate from African way of life. They are majorly based on morality and the way African and their custom, the way they organize themselves. So it is usually, it is usually based on African way of working and behaving. Applicability of African customary rules in the court. Compatibility. For a customary rule to be for a customary rule to be applicable, it must be compatible with, uh, with written laws and should not contradict it. Civil case. For customary rule to be applicable, it must be a civil wrong at can it can strictly not settle any criminal case. Another applicability is it must be acceptable and not repugnant. The rules should not be repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. Subject. One or more parties must be subjected to the custom affected by it. So, both parties must be professing the same custom and codes custom existence. The custom must have been in existence or exercise till time immemorial, not coming up with adapting some custom and thinking they can be enforced in a court of law since they are African customary law, it cannot work. Now outdated, the right to exercise the custom must not have been bypassed by time. It must be in existence throughout the life memory. So, Somebody cannot say I'm applying African customary law by conducting FGM. FGM is not repugnant, so it is outdated by time. So peaceful enjoyment, the custom should not have been exercised by the party using force. So it is conscience driven. So the custom should not be driven by using force. Using force, someone it is it is conscience driven. So. There are some matters which are dealt with by African customary rule. One of them is rad holding at a customary tina. Another one is marriage, divorce, and dowry maintenance. Another is, is intrastate or within the African strata succession discipline, enticement of any adultery, uh, adultery with a married woman, pregnancy of and married girls dispute, they are all settled, they cannot be settled by African customary rules. 
I think that one marks the end of our topic, the sources of rule. Thank you for watching. Kindly remember to subscribe and share. Thank you.